All right, so I'm Ryan, otherwise known as Man Is Music, and today I'm gonna do my next recent jazz vinyl finds. It's been quite a bit since my last video. You'll probably be able to tell throughout just because, you know, the amount that I have here and also, you know, the amount of heavy hitters and stuff like that. So before I get into the video, I wanna give a huge shout out to my great, great friend, Donovan Lee, who we've got some things going on in the community now. We got the podcast, which I also wanna let everybody know that, that the next episode will be on his channel and also be with a special guest who, you know, if you watch me and Donovan, you'll probably know who this guy is too as well. Um, I think people herald us as like, you know, the three younger collectors that, you know, kind of upload on YouTube and all that. So I think that'll definitely be a neat um, episode. And I think he has a lot of insight that me and Donovan don't really have. So I think, you know, definitely tune in for that. Although we're not sure, you know, on the date, what we got picked out yet just because we're all in school and um you know it's kind of hard to maneuver through each other's schedules and all that so anyway today on the table i got dexter gordon's go this is my 66 new york usa labels so it's during the conversion no p it just got the U new york usa labels but i'll be sending this to donovan so donovan within the next like week or two definitely look out for this on your doorstep although i think it'd probably be maybe a few days just because mini mail has been pretty quick so anyway um to start out the video i want to go ahead and do it with my um my favorite edition of my collection one that i never thought that i would have um at least for a while um but i want to give a huge thanks and shout out to the great Ilya pisman for this one um he sent me some crazy things he sent me the clifford brown with strings and then now lee morgan volume three and I think it's just crazy to say because he sent me my two favorite trumpeters, favorite albums um, that they've, you know, released. So I think it's just, I, I really don't know how to thank him. I, you know, I'm indebted to him, uh, especially for this one, because this has been on my want list for a while. The, the OG is obviously out of reach for me. So this is one that I was, you know, pretty keen on picking up, but I just never got the chance to. It was always a little bit more expensive than I, um, than I, you know, wanted to spend. And the auctions are kind of, you know, hit or miss in terms of quality for the United Artists pressing. So I was super glad to finally add this to my collection. And I, I have him to thank for it. So thank you so much. Um, I'll definitely, I gotta find something perfect to send you. Um, so it'll kind of like balance out. But I just love this record. It's probably gonna be my, within my top five records in my collection for the rest of my life. I don't see how anything could really top this, especially with the quality on this. It's near mint all around. So anyway, my next one here, you could probably say two, but I'll start out with this one. Blossom Deary 1975 on Daffodil. Um, this is actually pretty neat because it's signed on the, on the back there. Um, I don't think I want to frame this just yet because I have um, another record here that was also signed by her and I met somebody on eBay to you know get this deal um, we were kind of like figuring out like trying to I wasn't really bartering or anything like that but I was kind of you know just trying to get a good good deal going so um, I also got this with the same purchase I like this one because for, first of all I love this record um, this is I think this is her first release on da Daffodil volume one um, Daffodil was actually the label that she founded to release her um, music on. Um, but this is just a phenomenal copy. I wouldn't say it's like top tier, like real clean or anything like that. But I don't really complain when it comes to um, these kind of albums just because... Well, not these kind of albums, but like this era of albums. Like, you know, the more lo-fi sounding. I like the little pops every so often with these kind of records, especially, you know, the backing on this record, which is kind of cool because um, I think Pete Morgan plays bass on this and then Blossom Deary is on uh, the Rhodes piano, which I think is just phenomenal. She's probably one of my favorite pianists, also vocalist, you could say, but this is just a great, great copy because it's signed by Blossom Deary, also like the last one. So this is a OG, I think this is the only um, pressing that they had for that one. Um, the next one here I got from good friend Trent, Trent's Records. I'll also link him in the description. 
Um, I actually got the next one here also from him. McCoy Tyner, Knights of Ballads and Blues. Um, I don't really have too much of McCoy Tyner's like early stuff on Impulse. I got a lot of his later stuff. Um, at least like pressing wise, I don't have, you know, OGs um, or anything like, like this. This is a original stereo. I played this earlier today and I was just, I was astounded, like jaw dropped hearing this because it's just a phenomenal experience to listen to McCoy Tyner on vinyl. I think it's just because of the lineups that he has because it's they're very diverse. It's not really the same thing on every one of his releases. So this is definitely one of my favorites. It's got a lot of great standards. Um, Round Midnight, Satin Doll, and then um, what's the other one? How am I, am I forgetting? Uh, Johnny Mercer, and I think it's Days of Wine. Yeah, Days of Wine and Roses, and then um, Star Rise is on here too. So definitely one of my favorite um, McCoy Tyner albums that I got in my collection now. And again, thanks to Trent. Um, I've got a lot, I've purchased a lot of records from him. A lot of things that I've had on my want list, so. But anyway, the next one I got from him is Down to Earth, Freddie Roach. This is a, I think it's a second stereo because no P, but it's still got the New York USA labels. Really clean. I haven't played this yet because I, I just got these two today. Um, but I'll probably put this on my table after um, I finish the video. So my next one is another Blossom Deary record. Um, one that I, I just wanted to replace my Jap my Japanese copy for so long because I really want the originals in terms of Blossom Deary. I feel like she doesn't have that much, so it's like I feel like it's not an unrealistic task or anything, unless you're you know trying to get near mint copies. But you kind of just have to wait around for uh, deals to appear in terms of you know her records on Verve especially. But this is a really clean VG to VG plus copy that I got. Um, I'd say it's my favorite Blossom Deary album, um, probably because of the lineup. It's got Kenny Burrell, Ray Brown, um, and I think, is the drummer Ed T T Piggin, I think? Um, I guess it's not on here, but um, I'll have to look at that after the video. But it's got Kenny Burrell and um, uh, Ray Brown, I know that for sure. Um, a lot of great standards on here. You'll find that Blossom Deary a lot of the times picks out standards that are kind of like underrated at the time at least. Um, she kind of makes them popular um, in her own right. Just the way that she sings them, her style. Um, but a lot of great stuff on here. I think she features a lot of her favorite songwriters um, on there. So I think that's pretty neat for that fact. So then another heavy hitter that I got is the original Alice Coltrane and Monastic Trio. I really wanted this for a while, but I was kind of like, uh, I was just like edging on the air of caution, making sure I didn't get a VG copy or anything like that. And I got like a VG to VG plus copy, but I think it's, I think it's all right for me. The jacket is really clean, which I think is kind of a part of the experience with, um, you know, an impulse um, release, especially for Alice Coltrane. Um, I like you know, the presentation that you got here with the gatefold. Um, I just, I love this picture. Um, I love this record. I love the music here. Um, but this is her first release on Impulse under her own name, not, you know, with Coltrane or anything, because this was actually released after Coltrane had passed away. But it was, um, some of these tracks were recorded uh, during the same session that Coltrane was in. So I think it's pretty neat for that. Um, Really glad to have this in my collection though, finally, because I've just been, you know, I've wanted it for such a long time. Uh, I think it's just, you know, I try to get originals for these artists that I favor, but it's just kind of hard to do that these days because um, at least with Alice Coltrane, um, a lot of her stuff goes, you know, tends to yield high prices. All right, so then the, my next heavy hitter is the King and I they got from Jazz and Wasmo, also known as Glass Bead Records um, on Instagram. Um, he's got like a little sales page going on there and phenomenal selection. Um, I picked this up from him. Um, super happy that I, you know, could finally add this to my collection. And also from somebody that I knew too, because not only does this never go up for sale, but this is just a ridiculously hard record to get. 
Um, I also have to thank uh, Chris Wakim Brown for uh, you know letting me on to you know this record here because prior to getting this, I had um, also originals. I have all the originals for Wilbur Harden now, Mainstream 1958, which I had, um, and then Jazz Way Out. I both I got both of these from Strictly Headies. And then also Tanganyika Strut, which I got from a, another a random seller on eBay. Um, but these are all VG Plus copies. And that's why, you know, I'm really grateful to say that I, you know, own these. I'm really happy because the music is, it's astounding. Um, it lacks no, it lacks nothing. There's no imperfections in the music. Um, even the pressings. I think Savoy a lot of the times gets, you know, a lot of slack for being the lower grade um, in terms of labels but with these records you know top tier quality um, not a lot of noise uh, great sound so I'm really happy to have all of Wilbur Hardin's Savoy originals in my collection now so you could call this a heavy hitter but this is Blossom Deary Once Upon a Summertime this is not a first pressing. This is actually a second mono pressing. So it's the MGM. So it's probably like 60 to 66. I think that's when they had these pressings going on. But it's just in an in immaculate condition. The cover is near mint all around. You can see there's like no foxing or, or not no stains or anything. And the disc is, you know, it's just so shiny. No marks whatsoever. Um, I snagged this on eBay when I seen it go up for a deal, so super happy to have this now. Um, I've kind of been getting lucky with the Blossom Deary stuff, so really happy to um, kind of round out my Blossom Deary um, selection. So then my next one is an antique store find. I actually got this for a dollar from an antique store on my way to, it's not my home campus for college, but it's like downstate, so it's you know probably about half an hour. But this is Freedom Suite, Sonny Rollins. Um, this is actually not uh, original or anything. It's got the Deep Groove blue label on Riverside, but it's got the ink. The original didn't have the ink. But super happy to have this because, you know, it's so hard to get this record in general. And I think even with the condition, you know, a lot of the times with it being G+, you still see it, you know, commanding crazy amounts. So my next one here is Three for Shep by Marion Brown. And it was just Marion Brown's birthday the other day. And I really wanted to post this, but I was kind of busy. Um, but I just love this record. I got this off of eBay for a deal after I sent seller a best offer. And uh, he graciously accepted it. But this is an original um, on Impulse, Orange Label, all that, Gatefold. So really happy to have this. Um, I like the selections here. I like how this is kind of like, you know, it it's kind of gives you that feeling of uh, four for train um, that Archie Shep did when he was signed to Impulse, but now you got Archie Shep um, getting Marion Brown onto Impulse. So I think that's a pretty good um, you know idea that they had going on. Um, if I seen that back in the day, I would have picked that up immediately, especially knowing how good four for um, train was. That would be a no-brainer. But then my next one here is Larry Young's Into Something. I sadly don't have a jacket. So if anybody out there has like a spare jacket that, um, you know, maybe you don't have the disc or anything like that, I would definitely be interested in um, uh, Larry Young's Into Something if you have the jacket. And I would definitely pay up too because um, I really don't like having this sleeve. Um I, I don't really like these placeholder sleeves. I just want the jacket, um, especially for that Reed Miles cover. I really like that cover too because um, the architecture there. I'm an architecture major, so I kind of like, you know, the the modern-esque uh, architecture backgrounds because he's got the curved building in the background that kind of goes like, it's not like an S or anything, but it kind of goes in like a circular pattern. It's got windows all across there. I think it's just an amazing um, background for an album like that. I think, um, you know, out of all the Reed Miles covers, I think that may be my favorite cover, which is a sad thing because I don't have it. So anyway, my next one here is Cloak's, Cloak's Click 
by um, Kenny Kenny Clark. Yeah, I almost said Kenny Cluck, but Kenny Clark, who was a part of the Modern Jazz Quartet. Um, I got this from Zach's Jazz Records on Instagram. Uh, he, you know, put this up and I, I snagged it as soon as he put it up. Um, I'm kind of surprised because I would have thought this would have went fast. Um, you know, especially on Instagram because things tend to go um, pretty quick because people got post notifications on and all that. But this is a near mint copy all around. I see no imperfections on the disc. Um, original, um, you know, that maroon label they got going on. Um, the cover is immaculate. Um, I really like this session though because it's kind of recorded around the same town, around the same time. Mobley's messages and um, Horace Silver, um, Silver's Blue, which both of those sessions also have Donald Byrd. So I think it's pretty neat to hear Donald Byrd in a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a different environment here with you know John Laporta on alto, and then also uh, Kenny Clark kind of has a weird um approach to you know his records i don't think it's you know i don't think it's bad or anything i think it's just a little bit weird i don't think it follows a theme or anything like that but i still love that record so my next one here introducing kenny burrell you can see that this is a 66 liberty copy um it's pretty clean it's like vg to vg plus i i really think that in terms of these you can't really expect near mint anymore. I don't really see these going up in that great a condition these days. But this is that, you know, the conversion that they had going on. Because you have the Lexington cover, which is in pretty good condition. Um, the frame cover and all that, that they had going on. So I went upstate, excuse me, um, to pick this up after my, uh, my local shop, Jupiter Records, had their 10th anniversary sale. So I went up there and got that one. And then I also got the mono Joe Henderson page one. Um, I have a Liberty copy, but now super happy to have this one. Um, this one isn't that clean. It's like VG, but either way, um, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you know, get rid of my Liberty copy and just keep this one, but I'm not too sure yet, but either way, I'm just really happy to have this. Um, I definitely play this one more than I do my liberty copy now though so then the next one i got serenade to his soul sister pretty clean vg plus all around the horror silver quintet this has got i think it's got blue mitchell or no 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 it's got charles tolliver on it um and then stanley turrentine or no 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 stanley turrentine wait how is that i thought it oh yeah it does have stanley turrentine it just doesn't say it on the label which is kind of weird but then it's also got um, Benny Maupin, which I think was a, a pretty cool addition. And then Billy Cobham Jr. Um, so a pretty unique lineup for the time. I think it was like 66, 67. But I really like this record. Um, Kindred Souls on here. Or no, Kindred Spirits. Um, which great friend, um, Aiden Buck, he told me about Kindred Spirits. And because um Roy Hargrove had actually um played that one and then I seen that it was on this record and I was just you know I was pretty shocked um my records fell here so gotta lift them back up hopefully nothing got you know damaged or anything like that but Aiden told me about that song and I was just addicted to Roy Hargrove's version and then I seen it on this record so I I had to get it but also Horror Silver, so I mean, you know, I'm going to get it every time. So my next one, my point of view, also got this upstate um, at Jupiter Records. This is a Liberty copy, VG Plus all around. Um, I'm kind of going to like skim through these next ones because I don't want to have too, too long of a video. And then I got MI Blue, Grant Green. This is that, you know, the 71, 72-ish label that they had. The West Coast label, and then I think it became the East Coast label as well. Um, this is a really clean copy. There was this one eBay seller that kept listing a lot of great deals, and I regret not, you know, getting more. Um, but, I mean, it was out of my control, really, because uh, he put them up, and then they would get snagged before I even had the chance. So that was one of them that I got from him. 
I think I got another one in here from him too that I'll show. My next one is Eric Dolphy Far Cry with Booker Little. Um, my last video, I think I showed Far Cry, the Analog Productions release, but now I got the Blue Trident label, um, Van Gelder stamp in the shrink too, which is pretty surprising. Um, it's like VG, VG plus. Um, I may, I may get rid of this. And if I do, if Donovan, if you're watching this and I end up getting rid of this, this is going straight to you. Cause I know that you've been on the hunt for this and maybe that'll be the reason why I, I get rid of it because I do have the analog productions copy and I know that, you know, your system could probably take advantage of, you know, the Van Gelder mastering that they, that's going on here. So my next one is one that I have been wanting for a long, long time that I also got from Donovan, Clifford Brown, Volume 8 on Time Records. Nothing too, too crazy, right? But like, I think it's just kind of hard to get this. I think it's underrated too, um, but he sent me this and I was just, you know, floored because this has been on my want list for probably about two or three years now. You got Clifford Brown, Kenny Dorham, Booker Little, and then um, Tommy Turrentine, who I will be getting into with the Coltrane discography because surprisingly enough, Coltrane did record with Tommy Turrentine. So I thought that was pretty cool. I could get some early Tommy Turrentine um, in my collection on this comp because um, this is not a studio album or anything like that. This is just a compilation. And I really love the liner notes here. It was a really cool experience reading these liner notes while I was listening to, to the record. Um, it kind of goes into the fact that, you know, Clifford Brown and um, Booker Little, you know, they sadly passed away pretty early on in their careers, in their lives. Um, and then, um, you know, after this record was released, later on, Kenny Dorham would eventually pass away um, pretty early on in his life too. So, um, really love this record though. I, I really recommend everybody out there to go grab this. Um, a lot of people kind of give Time Records some slack because it's not like top tier quality, like I said, with Savoy. But I really like that record. It's a great experience all around. So my next one here is one that I got from another local store, um, Rainbow Records. Um, so big shout out to them. I got a lot of good stuff from them throughout the past couple years. Um, this is something else, Cannibal Adderley. I never had an early copy. I just had the classic series copy, but this is like a second pressing. So deep groove on both sides, 47 West 63rd, but it's got the R, copyright R. So um, not, you know, too much of a complaint there, but super happy to, you know, finally get an early copy and one that's kind of, you know, semi clean um, at least. So my next one, I guess is another heavy hitter i also got from jupiter records it's like g plus to vg i think it plays it it airs on the side of vg um this is uh when farmer met grice um been on my one list for a while i think this cover attracts most people um i think this may be my favorite prestige cover um you got farmer art farmer and gigi grice here shaking hands and they say this is a compilation but i don't know what else um you know, what other release these tracks would have appeared on. Maybe it was something on Metronome. I'm not sure because I know that would have been overseas. But um, these are, you know, a lot of great tracks here. Night at Tony's, Blue Lights, really early stuff. But it's like, it's a killer session or sessions as, you know, this is a compilation. And it's probably a combined session that's going on. So the next one is Indestructible. Art Blakey, original stereo, because it didn't have the P, but it had the New York USA labels. So I got that from that one seller that I was referring to earlier. Um, super, super clean. And this is a record that I was like, I didn't want to get, you know, the next pressing or anything. I felt like the original was, you know, I felt like it was within reason to try and um, go for it. So really happy to finally have that. Um, the next one here, well, these next couple... I guess I'll I'll do those at the end of the video because those are the reissues that I picked up. Um, the next one here I got is Mitzi by Mitzi Gaynor, her self-titled first release on Verve Records. I talked about Mitzi Gaynor in my podcast, um, and I seen that um, 
I forget which member of the Jazz Bums uh, commented, but they were like thanking me for the tip. Um, um, whichever member commented, this record, you have to go and grab it. This is this might be my favorite, one of my favorite Verve albums besides the Ella Fitzgerald stuff and the Blossom Deary stuff. I really think that this is overlooked, overrated. I mean, not overrated, underrated. Um, a lot of great tracks here. And I think the the orchestration, the arrangements here are also kind of, you know, jaw-dropping because this is a record that people look past and I don't think, you know, there should be any reason to because it's just an amazing record. Luckily, I got a near-mint copy all around. Um, somebody graded it, uh, VG+, Plus, but it's like spotless. Um, it is the blue label, so it's kind of that early vocal um, era of... Verve after, you know, the Norgran and, um, that early trumpeter label. So then I got that Mitzi Gaynor record, but then I also got Mitzi Gaynor sings the lyrics of, um, Ira Gershwin. Well, both the Gershwins, cause it's, you know, um, George Gershwin wrote the tunes and then Ira Gershwin wrote the lyrics. So I really love that songbook and I, I thought it was amazing that Mitzi Gaynor had, um, done the songbook, well, at least part of it, um, for Verve, because this isn't like a, you know, a double LP, like the Ella Fitzgerald, um, songbook releases, but this is a hell of a, um, you know, a songbook, um, attempt, I guess you could say. Not even an attempt, because this was more than an attempt. This was, you know, a planned, um, projected album. I don't think there's anything wrong with this, um, record, and I did also get a near-mint copy for this one, surprisingly because a lot of the times you see of a lot of her stuff going in like vg condition maybe g plus especially the covers you can never really find them um you know in immaculate condition so um probably my favorite pickup and probably a really big heavy hitter in terms of vocal jazz uh lucianne polk lucky lucianne on mode records um i kind of took a risk on this um the seller said it was like there was a pressing defect and that it was like VG, but I got it. And the pressing defect only affects the record for like maybe three or four rotations, but it's super quiet too. Um, you can see that the disc just is immaculate. There's nothing wrong with it. Maybe there, I think there you go in the camera, you can kind of see the imperfection there. Kind of, you know, shows there in light. Um, but... The tracks on here are amazing. Um, you got Memphis in June, written by the legendary Hoagie Carmichael. Um, you got some tracks written by Duke Ellington. Um, some uh, Gershwin tracks, Cole Porter. Um, uh, where else? Uh, Strayhorn. Um, and then a few other, you know, lesser known uh, lyricists and writers. But this is a phenomenal record. I can't stress this enough to go out there and pick this up. Um, put this on your want list. Um, don't don't wait around till this kind of like dries out because this is an amazing, amazing vocal jazz record. Um, one that I hold up there pretty high. So then my next find is Ella Fitzgerald, Cole Porter Songbook. I have like two other copies of this, but it's so hard to get clean. I think they just couldn't, um, you know, have a good pressing for this. I don't know where they were pressing these at. I don't have, you know, the pressing information. But every time I get this record, even if the disc looks phenomenal, it doesn't play too well. Luckily, this one, it's not perfect, but it plays a lot better than my other um, copies. So maybe I'll, you know, uh, send those off to somebody that, you know, is you know they can deal with the the noise and all that but i'm not sure um so anyway i guess i'll go to my reissues and then i'll go to the stuff that donovan sent me so i got um black fire andrew hill then i got uh, andrew hill point of departure classic series then i got sonny clark trio blue note really wanted this i think i'm surprised this didn't get more um, I just thought this would have been picked up more by a lot of people. I think this album is kind of up there in terms of, you know, the top Blue Note releases. 
especially in the 1500 series. So the next one, uh, Lee Morgan Infinity. Um, I'm not really too impressed with this pressing. My um, pressing is actually warped. And then I have some noise on the inner sides of the record, which is kind of weird. Um, and it also just doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like the other Tone Poets. I don't know why. Maybe it's from the LT series. Maybe, maybe that's the reason, but I'm not too sure. So then the next one I got, Booker Little out front. I really wanted an OG for this, but I kind of settled. Um, I wasn't trying to pay $400 for the original. But this is a stereo. I, I would like to hear it in a mono, but, you know, that'll suffice for me for now. And then I got Waltz for Debbie, um, the OJC that came out. And I'm, I was super impressed with this. I kind of waited a little bit to pick up the OJCs. I still need to get Mal 2, which I already have the 2 for 4 that um, Prestige did in the 70s. But um, I think it would be pretty cool to hear the OJC um, treatment on that. Then the last reissue that I picked up was um, Andrew Hill's Dance with Death. Um, I really like this one because, um, what's the what's the name of the track? Uh, we got Dance with Death, but then you also got, um, is it Black Rice, I think? Maybe that's what it's called. No, Fish and Rice. Why did I say Black and Rice? Um, but just love this record. I, I love the sound that he's got going on here. When I listen to this, I just throw in the entire album. I don't really like stop it or pick and choose songs. I think this is just a whole experience in of itself. So to finish out the video, I'm going to go over some of the finds. Well, some of the um, things that Donovan sent me, a lot of great, great stuff. So the first one here I got is Lyle Murphy, 12 tone compositions and arrangements. And it's got a weird lineup, something that I kind of wouldn't expect. You got Buddy Collette who did some, you know, the stuff with Chico Hamilton, like they have like Tanganyika on that lesser known label. You got Jack Dumont, Russ Cheever, Curtis Counts, um, Abe Most, Chuck Gentry, Andrew, Andrew Praven, um, or yeah, Andrew and Andre Praven, um, and then Shelly Maine. Um, really kind of a unique approach. Um, something that I didn't expect would be on contemporary records. Um, maybe it's just because of that lineup, um, but the next one I got is Lil Abner, and um, Donovan, since he lives on the West Coast, he sends me a lot of the, you know, the West Coast stuff that isn't too prevalent out here on the East Coast, so this is one of the ones that I had on my want list, and it's not a first pressing, but it is the pressing that I prefer for the contemporary stereo um, records, which is the Black Label. I think they... I don't, I don't really know. I guess I don't have any reasoning. I don't know why they sound better, but I just prefer them. So then the next one I got is the California Concert. Um, again, another, you know, prevalent West Coast um, record. Um, then I got Lorendo Alm Almeida, which is on this weird label that I've never seen, Concord Concerto. Um, I need to I need to play this. It, it is an interesting looking, but I just haven't played it yet. I think it's because I'm just occupied with school and, you know, the other releases that Donovan sent me. Because I've played most of them, except that one. Um, then he also sent me Nuff Said, which is a reissue of the original Bethlehem with J.J. Johnson and Kai Winding. Um, but this, I actually was trying to get this on eBay, but it's just so hard to get a clean copy. This one looks a little, you know, beat, but I think it plays uh, pretty nicely. Um, at least it surprised me when I looked at it and put it on the table. So really happy to have that. And then Donovan sent me a lot of vocal records that I, you know, at least artists that I wanted to expand on, like Chris Connor. Um, this is one that I had on my want list. And then he also sent me Chris Connor. Um, he loves me. Um, he loves me. He loves me not. Also on Atlantic. Um, I need to get more Chris Connor. These three that he sent me, they'll they'll suffice for. Or actually, four that he sent me, they'll suffice for now. But I definitely have to expand on my Chris Connor um, selection. Chris Connor sketches. Um, one of the later releases that she had, and then 
another Bethlehem release, Chris. I think this is this is her self-titled. I don't think this is her first though. I think the first one came out on a 10 inch and then this may have like extra tracks or something like that. I'm not too sure. And then Mark Murphy sings on um, Muse Records. Um, kind of an interesting, surprising release. One that I didn't, um, I never would have expected to be on Muse if he would have told me the lineup and that it was vocal and, you know, all that. But then the last one, the best for last, Hampton Halls, Volume 3, The Trio. Um, I have no Hampton Halls. I have a few albums with Hampton Halls appearing, but this is one that I, I really wanted to get. Um, I wasn't, you know, I didn't want to start out with Volume 1. I just wanted to jump to 3, and Donovan sent me this one. So, again, huge thanks to him for sending me all these amazing records. Um, also, you know, being a great friend, um, somebody that I talk to almost daily in the community, um, even outside of the community, we just talk about like all these different random things. Um, you'll be able to tell, th you know, throughout the podcast and stuff, um, how, you know, it's almost crazy how similar we are with our like tastes and like, um, it's not just jazz, it's everything. So anyway, a huge thanks to him. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, I will be getting the John Coltrane discography up on Saturday. Um, I I did post my announcements, but I want to remind everybody that I will be getting the John Coltrane discography up on Saturday, um, the 23rd, which will be John Coltrane's birthday. And I think that'll be an amazing way to celebrate his birthday. Watch that video and, you know, just dive into his discography, things that you never knew about. And, you know, it'll go on from there. It's like such a journey. I can't even explain it in my own words. You'll just have to watch the video and kind of go on it for yourself. I'll have it all set up. I'll have dates. I'll have a spreadsheet. Um, I'll have, you know, a question board kind of set up. And then also a way that I can kind of group together the future findings and um, just so I can make it a definitive version and so it's beneficial to everybody who's, you know, collecting Coltrane and um, just trying to complete his collection or find certain releases. Um, so anyway, I wanna, again, I want to thank everybody for watching and you can check out that video on the 23rd. So thank you.